Smart Mouth Beauty. My name is Heather and this is my sister Holly. And today we're going to talk about a little bit of a controversial topic. Just a little bit. We're going to talk about face injectables. And like, I'm not even sure I know what that means. So you're going to have to help us out. Well, when we talk about plastic surgery in general, plastic surgeries is surgery. But there are things that you can do. Um, you know, over 40, instead of going under the knife, there are so many things that you can just go and get injected into your face. Did you know about that? And it's by injected, you mean a needle? Yeah, like a needle. See, I'm not down with that. Okay. I don't, okay. Like what? Well, um, I want to, you know, it's, it's those modern technology things that we can do to kind of put off aging and I think over 40 or even in your 30s it's time to experiment with these kind of things and it, it can be controversial but I think we have to remember that any kind of injectable is temporary and it's kind of that gateway drug or a taste testing if you will if you want to get an eyelid lift or an eyebrow lift you can get a little Botox to kind of test the waters to see mm -hmm. if you want to go further and make it permanent or if you want to get a lip enhancement you can do a Juvederm and I'll talk a little bit about that and what those means instead of going under the knife and getting these lips permanently put in all of the and then injectables, if you don't like it then you're like then left you with like a clown mouth and it's pretty you know, permanent okay, right. unless you go and get it surgically removed so I think it's it's a taste testing and and I do uh, some injectables but you don't right and I started when I was 30 um, which was 11 years ago because I'm always about being preventative instead of trying to turn back the hands of time so I did it as a pro, uh, like a preventative or a, a proactive kind of thing. right so you started with Botox I did start okay. with Botox because I needed to get rid of my angry face Oh my god, did you have the <laughs> Did you have the RBF? <laughs> well, That's like I an actual medical condition is the RBF. And we'll put what that stands for right down below. Um, <laughs> Paul will have to look that he'll, up. Yeah, he'll need to look that up. But um you know, did you I have the RBF. I did. I did. Like people would come up to me and say, Oh honey, what's wrong? And I'd be like, What what? And what? Like, I was like, this is you my look, face. You look upset. Well, no, I'm just sitting here doing Sudoku. Well, you look mad. Well, I'm mad now. I'm mad now because you are perceiving something that my face is not supposed to be portraying. What was your face saying to people that you were mad? That I was mad. Okay. What does your face say now? And so you got Botox. Right. So Botox is something to be used mainly from the eyebrows higher on the face. Okay. Botox is something that they use a needle to inject. <laughs> and it contracts or relaxes the muscle that it's penetrated in. So a lot of times like uh, people have an 11 between their eyebrows and if you do a little bit of injection, usually three or four right through there, Botox is measured in units. Um, so they might do 10 to 20 units on a forehead. So it's very minute. It's very, it's a very small amount. But they actually inject using a needle poison into your face. Botulism is used for all kinds of medical technology. All right, I just want to make sure we were clear on that. Okay, so so then so it you, relaxes this muscle here, so you don't have those lines. Okay, and how bad did it hurt? My theory of pain is quite different from somebody else's theory of pain. Clearly, I'm not afraid of needles. Clearly. Okay. Um, I will tell you that, let's say I'm doing, you know, th three injections right here, and then I take it across my brow. I will tell you the more injections that they do, the more painful it is. Like in one session. The yes. more injections they do in one session, yes. the more it hurts. Do you know why? No. Because I had to anticipating ask. it? No, 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 no. I actually had to ask them. And she said the needle is dulling. Oh, because it's the same needle. Right. They're not going to change needle oh, okay. every single injection on me because it's just me. I'm not going to give myself a disease. You know what I mean? Right. But they're right, not going right. to also waste a brand new fresh needle on the same person. So when they do the first maybe three, it's like, okay, cool. Okay, a little pinch. And then when they come around and they're, they keep going with that same needle, it's just like a little 
Okay, do okay. they numb your the area? Do they numb your area? You absolutely can request to do that. I do not. Okay. So it's super tolerable. I, I, I do it. Just sit down. Let's do let's this. Let's do this. Let's do this. So how did you find um, a reputable place to go? Like what kinds of places, should, what things should we be looking for when selecting a facility to go and have poison injected into our face? You can definitely go to just your dermatologist's office. Uh, if you have a skincare provider and she's a dermatologist, board certified dermatologist, you can definitely go to him or her. However, there are medical spas that are kind of trendy these past, you know, 10 to 15 years. I like to go to a medical spa. I actually don't have to have an appointment. Um, I, there are two really large ones here where we, where we are, and I've tried them both. I like one more than the other. That's fine. Um, you have to just ask around and you can absolutely go and have a consultation. And I think the consultation is 11 years ago. So I don't know, it was maybe $45, but then right, when right. I purchased my first set of Botox and that $45 was credited. So okay, but who is, then if you're not going to the dermatologist and you're not having a medical doctor stick a needle of poison in your face. Oh, it's a plastic surgeon. These, 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 uh, these cosmetic. medical spas are medical doctors yes. with actual doctorate degrees. Yes. Okay. It's not just some pretty girl who went to beauty school that Correct. has a I do not okay. have the authority to inject into the skin. I just wanted to be clear. Cosmetologists so. or estheticians do not have the appropriate license okay. no matter what they say. Okay. It has to be a medical facility and it has to be sponsored by a plastic surgeon and then under them is the group of nurses okay. who can inject under the supervision of the plastic surgeon. Okay. So my so. first consultation was with the doctor Okay. And he uh, drew up a chart of my face and then recommended where to inject them. And so in my chart, now that I go to the nurse, uh, they'll open up my chart and say, was this comfortable last time? Were you still happy with the results? Should we adjust this in any way? Okay. So what does one expect when they go to get Botox? Let's say I decide to go to bo get Botox. Um, so you go, you don't have your makeup on. Well, absolutely. You go with makeup on. Oh, okay. I go with makeup on. Okay. They will take a little alcohol wipe and just kind of wipe. Clean the area it's that they're going to use. Super okay. quick. Then they, some uh, nurses do a little, um, maybe yellow marker to kind of like map out mm -hmm. where they're going to go with the needle. Um, some don't. Um, so you, you get, I don't even have to have an appointment. They take walk-ins. So I, I don't go, even know why you get out the car. I don't think you should. The there should be a drive-by shooting. Okay. Okay. So you just lean back. Drive-by shooting. <laughs> no, that could be the name of it. Drive-by shooting. Or you that just pull up so and they come out. I mean, you have a convertible, so why not? Right. <laughs> Okay, anyway. So you just lean back in the chair and you, you have your, you know, you're very relaxed and she's chit-chatting and you're talking about beauty and skincare and hair and all that kind of stuff. And so they usually start in the middle and they'll do some injecting and then they'll put their finger over it to kind like of... Like you do when you rip hair out of my face with a wax? Right. Yeah. Hurt and then press. Hurt and then press. And I might have a okay. little blood dot. I, I mean, I'm not right. bleeding down my face, but there might be a little blood dot. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you go and you pay and then she does recommend for you not to um lay down or put your head under your heart for four hours like okay. i couldn't i couldn't go and do yoga you cannot do a downward dog after botox and you, you shouldn't really lie flat you want to keep upright okay and um some places actually actually recommend you kind of moving that muscle to kind to work of it activate around. it and work it around so but when you leave like, do you feel like you have a headache or like you want to put an ice pack on your face or? Not for Botox. No. Okay. Well, let's keep talking about Botox for a minute and then we'll move on to other injectables. Sounds like a Disney cartoon, but not in a good way. Um, so how expensive is it for one treatment? I mean, you don't have to give exact prices because we're where we are may not be the same price as in Los Angeles, for example, but right. like generally speaking, is it right. terribly expensive? It's priced out per unit. So when you call the doctor's office, you say, how much is a unit of Botox? Um, the 
average in where we are is $12 per unit. Uh, you can get um, on special, like right after Christmas, there was like a $10 a unit Botox special. Oh, you can get a Groupon. Okay. <laughs> Um, I have seen it as high as $15 a unit. Okay. So if I do, um, you know, 10 units at $10, you know what I mean? There, okay, there's so your, $100. Right. So, um, or if I do 20 units, I think my average is 20 units, uh, and I do it twice a year. Okay, so how long, if like, for example, if I were to go to have my 11 worked on, ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding, if I were to go to have my 11 worked on, how soon after the injection would I notice results? That's a good question. Um, it usually takes about three days. When I first started having it done, it, I really didn't notice a difference. I would have to wait that three days. But now, I almost notice that day. Mm -hmm. It really does happen pretty quick. They say to get it done um, every three to four months. But I do it every six months because it really lasts on me. So do you feel like when, let's say, it's a week after you've had your Botox and you're putting on your foundation and you're going over your face, can you feel yourself do that? <laughs> or is like it's your not face a like numbing. dead? It's not a numbing. It's okay. not a numbing feeling. But I will have to tell you, because I do, I, I get my 11 worked on and then I also get my brows lifted. They kind of put the, in the muscle up here to kind of contract that. I have a hooded eyelid and what that means is that I have this chunk of skin that rests down on my eyelashes and I have them lift That's that kind of off. It's kind of sexy though. When you look at you from like the profile. See, isn't mine? But what I really notice that third or fourth day after getting Botox is that I have to do my eyeshadow differently or my brows differently. I'm like, my brow is way up there. That is way different. In a good way? Mm -hmm. I'm not sold on this yet, people. I'm not sold. Okay. So what other kinds of injectables are you having um, done to your face? Okay. So let's talk about uh, Botox or Dysport is for the forehead lifting, the eyebrow lifting, and in between the eyebrows. Or um, sometimes a little bit of the crow's feet. So when you think of Botox or Dysport, which those two are in the same family, um, you think of the upper face, just as a nice rule of thumb. That's not 100% of the case, but it's 85% of the case. So I just wanna focus on that. Nobody's ever gonna get Botox in their lips. That's, that's not the thing. So when you talk about the lower half of your face in regards to inject injectables, what are we talk? What are we talk? What are we calling it? Well, they're not. Maybe the maybe. <laughs> wait, maybe from here down it's the inflatables, <laughs> like the actual <laughs> Disney. Oh, that is so. That is so right because all of those are going to be volume fillers. You know, um, underneath your eye, if you want to puff up some of that recession from an under eye bag um, because the bag is not necessary. Sometimes the bag is puffy, but there's usually an under the bag that just loses all of its volume. Mm -hmm. So it looks like you have a bag, but what's really happening is that under that is lost its volume. Have you had that done? I've not, but I've had that many clients. That like that a mofo. <laughs> what is a mofo? <laughs> yeah, mom wants to know. <laughs> It's an inside I've had, joke. Okay. I've had a lot of clients that have had that done and it is beautiful. It is, it's filling and plumping out where you naturally just Does it look like volume. I need filler or plumping in any way? <laughs> I mean, I'm asking. I, I realize I have the number 11, also known as my goalpost. I understand You're that. You plumpy face. But I do, right. You have a plumpy face. Okay. But for someone who loses volume, that, that's when we're talking about Juvederm, uh, Perlene, Restylane. There's all of, of those kind of hyaluronic acid family injectin, injectables. And that's where it plumps up. You see those ads about the parentheses? Have you seen those ads in the magazines about the parentheses? Okay. Is that what it's called? And it's a Juvederm ad. Anyway, so it takes away the nasal labial folds or your laugh lines. So I've had that done. <sighs> if we wanted to talk about that as well, I don't know. But why? Why? So I'm plumpy. 
and smooth. You it's all go, about smoothness. Uh, you can go eat a Big Mac and get the same result. <laughs> it's not true because it's just going to plump up out here, and it, and then I look like a marionette. So you gotta you gotta fill you gotta pull that back out so that you're smooth around your lips. That hurt really bad. Okay, I if you can tell by the expressions on my face because I have not had Botox and I can make facial expressions. <laughs> make facial expressions. Um, I'm not on board with this. Like, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like it. Just because you're afraid of needles. I go to an acupuncturist. How am I afraid oh. of needles? I pay a man to like stick him, stick me with needles. It's fabulous, by the way. <laughs> we'll do a whole video on that sometime too. Sure. But no, I, but it's not in my face. These things are so temporary and I think are, are so worth it. Uh, I love doing them. I don't go overboard. I do Botox twice a year and I do um, usually Juvederm or Juvederm Plus uh, once a year. Let's talk about your lips because those were not the lips that you were born with. <laughs> Cat's out of that bag, yo. That's fine. I, I have no problem talking about I talk about this kind of stuff all day long in the hair salon. I feel like it is my job to be up on the latest beauty enhancements, whether it's hair or makeup or plastic surgery. So what surgery. do you have done to your lips? Um, I think my, <laughs> my lips are thin, but they're also too narrow for the bulk of the width of my face. So we but if you had done about, the injectables here, you wouldn't have bulk or width. Actually, I, I, I lift this out so that it, it pulls my upper lip back up into proportion. So you haven't actually had lip fillers? I have. So they'll do the nasal labial folds and then they'll come up and do underneath here. You're out of your that. effing mind if you think I would take a shot there without being put under <laughs> or 10 shades of drunk. Because I know how bad it hurts when you wax my stash. I want to cut your throat. So I can't imagine how bad that hurts. It's very painful. Um, you can find a doctor or a medical spa to do a topical numbing cream, but I'm actually kind of sensitive to that numbing cream. So if you're not sensitive to the numbing cream, definitely go 30 minutes in advance to apply some sort of lidocaine or in that family. Or do shots of tequila in the car. <laughs> uh, to, to numb up your lip. Or you can find a place to do a dental block, which um, there's, there's actually a place around here that can do a dental block, which is kind of a injection of Novocaine on the inside as if you were gonna get a dental procedure done. I am perfectly fine with my thin lips. I, I, I am, I am so fine, fine with, with your thin lips too. I really, I have no problem with, I'm not doing that. I'm on the fence I'll about Botox. Hand. No. I will hold I, your hand. We'll okay. film it. I, if I, am, I am on the fence about Botox. I can understand why people do that. I can understand that because I think that that will really age you and nobody wants to walk around with the RBF. I know. It's, and it, so, it's, I mean, I really do understand that because I know people that that personally who walk around and they look like they're just mad at the world right. or like they don't feel good or whatever. And, and I'm in front of the public every I hour of that. every day. But it's like the whole thing with my I'm, my lips. I I'm pretty I'm I'm fine with that. The way we're not doing that. My whole life is in front of a mirror, though. You might I think different. You might think differently if you set a mirror in front of you and work for nine hours. I don't want to do that. Well, I'm just saying I want to do that. I don't it's just the do weight that. of it. Okay. Is there anything else that, that we need to know about? Like, how expensive is that? Like, when you do your lips? It's pretty expensive. Um, they, they use a measurement uh, per vial. Remember how the Botox or Dysport was in units? Juvederm, Restylane, or Perline is in a vial or syringe uh, prepackaged. And so you buy them per syringe or per vial. Uh, on average, again, we are in Louisville, Kentucky. So on average here, they are $500 per syringe. No way. And Too cheap. I use two. Too cheap. There, there is no way I'm doing that. I invest in my beauty because this is part of my job. It's part of my job to, I can't tell you how to look cute if I'm not cute. 
Okay. And look. I like to like test that out for my clients and be like, you know what, I've done that and so I it's love it. So it's deductible. It absolutely is. Either I say, I've done that and I love it and I recommend it and here's why, or I'll be super honest and say, I've tried that and I hated it and I don't think you should do it. Like lash extensions. I tried lash extensions for a client and I hated them and then I told all my clients. But I love Botox and, and fillers and things like that. And I recommend it. And I tell my clients and we talk all about pros and cons and who should do it and why and where. Still not sold. <laughs> Thinking about the Botox. I could understand If you that. think Heather should do then, it, put it in the Yeah, comments. thumbs up if you think Heather should be do, do Botox. And that'd we'll be film great. it. No, that'd be swell. I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you so much. Is there oh, anything yeah. else we need to know? Uh... I think we touched on quite a bit. Okay. If you have any questions about um, Botox oh, or wait, let me just let me just reiterate one quick thing. All of this that we're talking about or I'm talking about is temporary. The Juvederm, the wrestling, except the your bank account. <laughs> You're temporarily all of broke. It is absolutely temporary. They will dissipate absolutely 100. percent So. If, okay. if you did it once and never ever again, it will completely you will you have not permanently go back to normal. Ruined yourself. No. Okay. I appreciate that. If you have any thoughts or questions about that, please leave them down below because we're interested in what you think. And um, thank you for subscribing and for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye guys. My butt could not be more asleep right now. Are you on like the pillow? My I am on the pillow. What? My What's tailbone. Wrong with your pillow? I don't know. Do you want to go back to the cooch chair? No. No. <laughs> no. Okay, I feel like a little belch coming on. <laughs> Like and when Heather says little, that means <laughs> giant. No, I have to try to. I have to right. try to be a lady. Okay, we're on a timer. Okay. Uh,